Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In today's video I'm going to check out this machine, it's a Sharp MZ700. But before I start I thought I'd just mention that if you want to support my channel you can either join uh, my channel here as a member on uh, YouTube or you can join me on Patreon.com. And if you become a supporter you get to see my videos before everyone else and uh, without uh, the ads. And sometimes I also make a special video just for uh, the patrons and the supporters. This is the machine I'm gonna check out today and it is a Sharp MZ700 personal computer and as you can see it has uh, probably seen better days, it is quite dirty. Uh, there's actually a printer or a plotter in this machine built in, it has some broken off uh, <laughs> paper holder, missing uh, the lid and uh, yeah while the cassette player seems to be okay it seems to be very dirty inside with the machine i also got this book peeking and poking the sharp and uh, of course some uh, software yeah some games and i even got a bunch of uh, cassette tapes here so uh, yeah, this will be interesting to check out. So I got this machine a while back. It has been sitting on my shelf for a long time now. I know it was its turn to get some uh, treatment. I have powered it on once before and it did turn on, but uh, I'm not sure about the condition otherwise. Um, it has a built-in power supply that has uh, Rifa filter caps that can uh, blow up when they are this old. So I need to take a look at that. Otherwise I will uh, do some cleaning restoration work on this and uh, yeah, basically test it out, see if we can uh, run some games and uh, what else we can do with it. Alright, let's take a little walkthrough about the exterior of uh, the machine and uh, yeah, it seems to have a very nice keyboard. Colorful, <laughs> built in uh, cassette player as I said, uh, plotter. This has some small pens. I know it's possible to get the new pens for it, but I couldn't find it uh, uh, right away. I haven't really searched a lot, but uh, I'll check out that. And um, if we take a look at the side, the case is not damaged. If we take a look at the back, it has uh, quite a selection of uh, connections. This is a RF out and this is a video out, composite video. It has a uh, External cassette, a read and write, it has a joystick 1 and 2, it has an I.O. bus and a printer uh, connection, these are blinded off. This is a volume control, a reset uh, button there. This is for grounding the machine, <laughs> I've never seen that before. And it also in fact has RGB output. The joystick ports are very simple, just these uh, pins that sticks out and you use uh, connectors like this. <laughs> the underside, there's nothing to note, just a label here. Here it says MZ731 and just a serial number made in Japan. I have hooked up the machine to my TV and I think I'll take a chance here. I'm gonna turn it on and see if it uh, powers on and hopefully there won't be any magic smoke. <laughs> so the plotter starts working and maybe I should uh, set my TV to uh, start. Yes, look at that. It actually turns on and this machine does not have a built-in basic so you actually need to load that from a cassette. Even if it doesn't have basic, it works by uh, you uh, typing commands here. So 
yeah, for loading from cassette, you type load. So if I press enter, then it says play and you need to press play. So let's see if we can load this game instead of basic. And this is the first time I ever tried to load something on this machine, so <laughs> I'm not really sure. Well, it found Galaxia. That means that the cassette drive is kind of working, but it probably needs a good uh, service, some cleaning and uh, lubrication work. This machine has a Z80 clone as a CPU, and I'll come back with the technical specification uh, soon. But for now, let's see if this game loads. So the tape stopped, it came to an end and uh, the game did not load. Uh, that's not unexpected at all, so <laughs> we'll have to take a look at that uh, later. The Sharp MZ700 was released in 1982 and it was based on the MZ80K series that was produced uh, back in 1978. So the MZ700 is in fact a MZ80K compatible machine with uh, color graphics. And it came in uh, four different models with different peripherals. There is no language or operating system in ROM. Uh, since the ROM size is only 2K, it is just used for uh, booting and uh, OS calls. The CPU is a Sharp LH0080, which is a set 80 compatible uh, CPU running at 4 MHz. It has 64 kilobytes of RAM, 2 kilobytes of video RAM and 2 kilobytes of uh, ROM. Graphical wise uh, this machine is not very powerful and uh, because of that it had some uh, rather poor games. It can only support text mode and uh, a kind of graphics mode with 50 times 80 characters in 8 colors. And it just has a simple 1 channel 3 octaves uh, sound chip. So I was thinking maybe it can calculate something but it doesn't seem to be able to but it has a print command so if I type print 10 it actually prints it on the plotter. Let's try again. <laughs> I need to find some paper but I'm not really sure where you can get that. It has two modes on the keyboard. It has this regular alpha command mode and then if you press the graph you go into graphical characters mode. Looks like the Petsky characters on the Commodore. <laughs> and it has a lowercase characters uh, with holding the shift down. Besides uh, load and save and print, uh, there's actually not many other commands you can do, but you can, for example, modify the memory if you want to do that directly by the M command. And, uh, and then you can enter an address. And now you're into uh, editing mode and you can type um, hexadecimal values and if you have typed in a small machine code program like that you can actually jump to that by the j command let's jump to 1000 it will probably crash then yeah <laughs> Alright, I think that was about it for the demonstration of this machine this far. Uh, now let's take this machine, open it up and tear it apart and do some uh, restoration work. Let's see now if we can open this machine and uh, I can only see some screws uh, behind here. There's uh, none under the machine and if I lift the machine and <laughs> turn it, there is there is something loose inside. Oh yeah, I see three screws in the front under here. So I start by those. I have no idea how you uh, take this apart, but uh, now this is loose at least <laughs> yeah and it's just a simple connector down there so this is a modular design and the printer same there two connectors 
let's mark them so we don't get the wrong way when we assemble this. Then we have a couple of screws here. All the screws this far is the same size, so that's good. This part is not possible to take off, but now I think it's just uh, clipped in here, so... Yep. Okay. That was it. And that revealed the motherboard. The keyboard is uh, has this large connector in front. Not really sure what the type of connector that is. Yeah, I think you just pull it out. Yeah. And uh, two ground wires. All right, here we see the motherboard in all its glory and uh, yeah, looks uh, quite neat. There's a couple of uh, switches, printer switch and uh, tape switch. There's the Sharp Z80 clone and uh, there is a custom chip. It says Sharp M6079 and I looked it up and it is uh, the memory controller and the CRT controller in one chip and this is a NEC chip it is a PPI a programmable peripherals interface memory over here I guess and yeah the rest are probably some uh, control logic and uh, ROM Mitsubishi electric uh, on this one the board looks nice I can't see anything wrong I cannot see a lot of dirt so uh, this is good. I'm gonna clean over it with some um, alcohol, that's it. And um, the main reason I opened it was, as I said, because I wanna take a look at the power supply. And this box is the video module. And the thing that was uh, loose inside, I found it uh, between here, it is a small coin. It's in fact a 10 euro. 10 euro is one tenth of a crown and a Norwegian crown is uh, around one tenth of a euro so this is one hundredth of a euro and these coins don't exist in Norway anymore these were gone many many years ago I think like 30 years ago and I actually have a little collection of coins so this goes into that <laughs> It's hard to see, but I think it says 1960 something. So this is quite old then. Older than me, in fact. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna remove uh, the power supply and uh, there's a few screws on the sides. As always, these connectors are very hard to get out. Then I'm gonna remove the motherboard just to get it out and be able to clean the whole um, case and thing. So the build quality on this machine is very good. Very good screws and uh, yeah. Everything looks to be well taught out. Now this is loose as well. I'm just gonna leave it there. And um, now the motherboard is loose, but it is uh, even further secured by having some of the PCB sticking out through these uh, grooves here in the metal chassis. So I'm not really sure if I need to bend those back. Use a little force. I think that's it. All right, it's out. 
Okay, so there's a little bit of dust. Just blow it away. I'm removing the metal chassis as well, just so that I can take the plastic case and uh, clean it in water. Okay, there you have it, one Sharp MZ700 taken apart and now I'm gonna clean the plastics. Let's take a look at this uh, power supply then. Gonna open it up, it has a couple of screws. There you go. And as you can see, it has one uh, Rifa capacitor and uh, it is quite cracked, so um, that one needs to go. I'll check if I have a replacement. That's a 0 0.047 microfarad and in fact I got a modern replacement here, so I'm gonna replace this now. Oh, there's some uh, plastic, uh, plastic rivet holding it down, <laughs> of course. It's this then. Use my desoldering station for that. Then in with a new one. So that was quick and easy. Otherwise this power supply looks to be in good shape. Um, yeah, these large capacitors um, look good. Not bulging, so uh, yeah, probably can last a while more. Okay, now that was the power supply and now we are safe from uh, that uh, reefer capacitor blowing and giving us some magic smoke. The motherboard looks okay, but I'm just giving it a little bit of a cleaning with some alcohol just uh, while I'm at it. Then a little bit of a contact cleaner. While I have the board out, I was thinking maybe I should replace the few electrolytes on the motherboard. There's just two, four, six, eight, nine, if I have the correct values. Okay, then next up is um, the cassette module and uh, I'm gonna open it up just to clean it and lubricate a little bit. Okay, that's it. Yeah, it looks all right inside. A little uh, dust and dirt, but that's mostly on the other side, I guess. And the dry mechanism and the belt seems to be in good shape. The dry belt is not uh, cracked, so yeah. But I need to take it out of the housing just so that I can reach from the other side. Just gonna add a little drop of uh, oil here. So I think these are the screws uh, that holds it to the case. So. So now it should come out. Yes. 
Alright, so now we got access to the mechanism and can clean everything. Doesn't look too bad actually, so uh, yeah, just gonna use a good amount of uh, alcohol and then clean everything. And luckily there's no uh, corrosion that I can see. And this belt looks to be good also. Yeah, I think it's clean now, except for uh, the heads. Clean uh, those. And also this roller, don't know what it's called. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, now I'm gonna lubricate a little bit uh, some of the moving parts around this uh, points where there's uh, friction. So I just use a little bit of um, silicon grease. Yeah, I think that's it for the cleaning. Just gonna assemble it again and over to the next item. <laughs> Okay, that looks good. Just a little cleaning on the plastics and we're done with this. Next is uh, this uh, plotter and as you can see here are some small pens in a holder and uh, they have different colors. This one has uh, blue, marked with blue, this one yellow and this one red. I actually doubt these are good anymore and uh, I have not been able to find any new ones so at least for this video I won't be able to demonstrate but um, I thought I'll clean it up anyway and also fix uh, this broken off uh, paper holder. I actually got the part here so I'm gonna just uh, try and glue it on. Let's see if we can open this, I'm not really sure. There's just two screws and uh, this is screwed down from the inside so Maybe it's that simple, only two screws. Yeah, <laughs> it was that simple. Okay, so that's the whole mechanism, looks uh, rather simple. So I'm not gonna do much here, just try and clean up uh, any dust and uh, yeah, that's it. There's a bunch of plastic uh, cogwheels here, so I'm just gonna have a tiny little drop of oil. Yeah, that was it for the inside. There's some rust there actually, so uh, I'm gonna take that away with some uh, WD-40. Tiny amount of WD-40 on a paper tissue. So that should help protect uh, that corrosion. Okay, cleaning the outside. Last thing to do is to glue on this uh, paper holder. The last part uh, to take a look at is the keyboard of course and uh, while it's not very dirty I can see a lot of uh, dirt and dust under the keys and uh, I don't like dirty keyboards so uh, I need to clean this. Yeah that's the same uh, <laughs> actually exactly the same mechanism as uh, on the Commodore. 64 keyboard. Uh, I don't know if you can see this but it has this uh, plus shaped plunger and the spring around so yeah familiar type 
these smaller F keys has uh, some smaller springs and uh, the spacebar has a larger spring so I keep that separate. Spacebar also has this uh, metal support. Looks exactly the same as on the Commodore 64. All right, keyboard looks okay, a lot of dust. I'm gonna clean it up and uh, clean all the keys. And the keyboard has been cleaned and I'm ready to assemble it. Luckily this uh, keyboard was not uh, yellowed, so uh, all the keys looks uh, very nice and uh, yeah, all cleaned up. Start with the space bar. It's always satisfying to assemble a, a keyboard like this. Keyboard is complete and uh, it looks very nice. This is a very good looking keyboard in fact. A lot of similarities with the C64 keyboards. Oh, I almost forgot. I uh, was planning to recap the board and uh, I've written down all the caps. I think I have all the values. Let's take a look in this uh, big box of uh, capacitors. I found all the caps and I'm just uh, quickly gonna replace uh, all the electrolytes with these new ones. Not that it's uh, strictly necessary, but uh, you never know when these start to fail. And uh, yeah, while I'm at it, I can just uh, simply replace them anyway. all the caps uh, now just a little cleaning and then it's in with the new ones That was the caps and uh, yeah, looking good. Of course, uh, the video module also have a bunch of uh, capacitors, electrolytes and uh, yeah, they all look uh, very nice. So uh, yeah, that's, that's simply too much work for me to bother to replace those. Uh, no, and I don't think I have all the necessary values. So uh, I'm gonna leave those, they can of course be replaced some other time if necessary. It's time to start assembling the machine.
Okay, the machine is uh, finished and uh, the last final touch I'm gonna do is to use uh, this uh, 303 plastic protectant that I recently got. Uh, just to check it out, give it a little uh, shine on the plastics. Unfortunately, I cannot find the cover for uh, the plotter. Uh, I have searched around and uh, I can't find any 3D models either, so uh, I either have to <laughs> design one myself or uh, I'm gonna look for uh, the cover. I'm ready to test. <laughs> Exciting. Does it still work? Yes, it does. Actually, I had an issue with the keyboard when I pulled out the connector for the keyboard, some of the teats of the contact uh, was bent out because they grip on uh, the flat cable so um, some of the keys didn't work after I inserted the cable again but I fixed that and uh, now the keyboard should be working uh, just fine so just be aware of that if you ever take out the keyboard from uh, this machine Let's see if we can load something from tape. I have this uh, Norwegian adventure game. It actually, <laughs> it's uh, in Norwegian. So, uh, okay. It says Ace Racer on that tape. So that is maybe not the, <laughs> the game after all, but uh, I'm gonna test it. So let's check. You actually don't need to type load, it's enough with an L. I think whatever you type after the L, it is still the load command. <laughs> loading Ace Racer, all right. Hopefully it can complete the loading. Yes, that completed, but how do we run? <laughs> Not really sure if this uh, game should auto start. It could be that it's a basic game and you need to load basic first. I'm not sure, I'm trying to load again from the other side. I'm trying uh, that uh, Galaxia game that I tried first. Loading Galaxia, let's see if this works now. I actually checked out this uh, Ace Racer game and it is a basic game, so uh, no wonder it didn't load. Nope, it still ran through the tape and then it stopped and uh, nothing happens. Anyway, I found a basic uh, on this tape, so uh, I'm gonna try that one. Loading S Basic. Okay, finally something loaded here. <laughs> so, Basic Interpreter, copyright 1983 by Sharp. 36,439 bytes free. Okay, let's uh, make a little program. So that seems to be a bug-free uh, software. Uh, let's run. <laughs> okay, how do we uh, how do we break? Not the break key. <laughs> Not obvious. Oh, it was a shift break. <laughs> okay, so maybe now we can load uh, a basic game. Let's try that Ace Racer and I know figure that this is just a generic cover for uh, games and it says here Ace Racer. So this must have been a painful experience having to load basic. It took like five minutes to load the, the basic every time you want to play a game or use this machine. I guess it is uh, a load. Yeah. All right, found Ace Racer, loading Ace Racer. All right, now we're cooking. So that's the program listing. <laughs> Run. Oh, <laughs> press any key for instructions. Use the cursor or a joystick, accelerate with the A and break with the B. <laughs> Oops, I crashed. <laughs> Four cars left. <laughs> so you are driving downwards. 
<laughs> okay, that was not a good game. So I realized I had the uh, white balance completely off uh, on the camera. This is uh, how it's supposed to look. So <laughs> testing this one, it says 10 plays for MZ700. All right, so now I try to load that uh, game, uh, battle game from uh, the monitor program, not from basic. And it actually shows a loading screen here. Please wait. All right, look at that. Battle game. Push S to start. <laughs> Oops. So this is obviously a two player game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can move forward as well. And the other guy. Yeah. I can play a two-player game against myself then. <laughs> Super Puckman. <laughs> Look at that. It's a Pac-Man clone. So let's see if we can play this. If only I knew which key to press. All right, uh, the final thing I want to test is uh, in fact Pascal. I found a cassette with uh, Pascal and uh, since I used to be a Pascal programmer back in the day, it might be interesting to see uh, Pascal on this machine. Loading HP4 T set. <laughs> What's this? Top of RAM, let's say 4000. Table size. I have no clue what this means. That just crashed, so I'm loading it again. And uh, HP4 stands for High Soft Pascal 4. And this is a 64K machine, so the top of RAM should then be FFFF. <laughs> yeah, that just crashed. Have no idea how to use this. All right, I didn't want to invest too much time in uh, trying to uh, get that uh, Pascal running. So I think this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then press the subscribe and the like buttons. So thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.